Hey guys, Fan Addict here. Uh, so I wanted to show you what I've been working on for the past couple of days. Um, some bases for specifically the Axis and Allies naval miniatures game, but this can be used to make bases for any type of naval game. Um, basically, this is this is what they turn out looking like. Um, you've got obviously the ship here, the miniature in the center, and then you've got a name and a nationality flag. Now, this is just my personal preference of what type of information to put on the base, but you can do as little or as much as you want. The, the name, the nationality, you can even put what type of ship it is, uh, you know, a battle cruiser, battleship, destroyer, or if you're doing Age of Sail stuff, you know, uh, first rate, second rate, frigate, that kind of stuff. You can even put information about the guns, stats, whatever you want to put on the base, it doesn't really matter. This is just my personal preference, just the name and the nationality flag is, is enough to suffice for me. So you're going to need a couple things. Um, the main one is this right here. This is sort of a, a clear sort of PVC plastic sheet, you can tell it's, it's pretty thin. Um, this is specifically made by uh, a company called Midwest, but there's probably other people that make it. And you can find this stuff um, at most hobby stores, Hobby Town, Hobby Lobby, places like that. Anything that has you know, modeling supplies, that kind of stuff. Um, and basically you just cut it. This comes in, uh, what is it, uh, 7.6 by 11 inch sheets. And as you can see, I've cut some off for the bases that I've already made. So you'll need that. You'll need um, blue tack which is this stuff right here, also known as poster tack. It's just a little kind of sticky putty type stuff that people use to put posters and stuff up on the wall. It doesn't really leave much residue when you pull it back off. It stays sticky forever. I've had this stuff out for years. Um, you can get that at Walmart. It's usually like two bucks or so a pack. It's not very expensive. Um, you'll need paint, obviously. Um, what I'm working with right now is I've got some Vallejo white, some Vallejo medium blue, Vallejo uh, dark Prussian blue, and then lastly uh, some Citadel Cyberite green. Um, but basically any kind of white, medium blue, dark blue, and sort of like a, a teal or turquoise type color. And then lastly, and this is optional, uh, you'll need um, just like a little bit of packing tape. Um, I just put that along the bottom of the base just to protect the paint job, make it move along the table easier. But by no means do you have to do that. Like I said, completely, totally optional. Um, so that's pretty much everything we've got at the moment. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into it and I'll show you how they're made. Okay guys, so the first thing you want to do is you want to get your, your base cut and your model actually mounted to it. Um, so for base size, it, it doesn't really matter unless of course you have a, a specific requirement for a specific game. Um, and you know, I just kind of set the model down on there, figure out about where it needs to be. I, I give it, you know, anywhere from a quarter of an inch to half an inch on each side. That should give you enough room for any type of name or stats or anything you want to put on there. And then I usually do about a quarter of an inch or so off the stern and just a little bit on the bow there. Again, it doesn't really matter. This is just my personal preference. Um, but the first thing you want to do is you actually want to attach the model to the base itself. Um, if you're gluing it, then obviously you can just glue it down. If not, then that's what the blue tack is for. Just take a little bit, you just wanna stick a little bit in a couple different spots. Um, typically I do one in the center, and then one kind of in the bow, and then one in the stern. Just kind of like that. And it just kind of depends on what the, the bottom of your model looks like. Um, but once you get that done, you just want to take it to the base itself. Just kind of line it up. And then press it down. And like I said, I'm using the blue tack because it's removable. And at some point I may want to pull the, the ships off the base itself. But if you, you're you sure you want them there, you can just permanently affix them there with some super glue. Not a big deal. And you just flip it over, you see the blue tack is all stuck down, and you now have a, a see-through surface where you can see the bottom of the model. So if you have stats on the bottom of the model, um, and you don't cover it up like I did with the blue tack, then you can actually leave this part uh, clear so you can actually see the base of the model and anything that's printed on the bottom of it. But now that it is attached on there, you can kind of look at it. Again, if you're using the blue tack, you can kind of move it around a little bit, figure out exactly where you need it to be. And then once you're happy with it, uh, we're good to go on to the painting section. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is you want to start off with uh, some white. So I've put a little bit of it down there. You don't need very much, um, and you're going to kind of do sort of a, a dry brush kind of stippling type motion. So I've got just a little bit on an old crappy messed up dry brush. What you want to do is you want to start from the bow up here and just kind of stipple around it. 
sorry, that was off camera. Just gonna stipple around it like that. And you don't want to be sort of too regular, because I mean this is just sort of you know the, the the water and the white caps and stuff foaming around it. Get a little bit more, keep going around, and you want to go all the way to about sort of a midships right around the base of the ship and then you want to kind of spread it out from the rear there and if you get too much in one little spot you can just kind of spread it out again because remember we're painting the bottom of the base so this will all show through onto the top and that'll give it a nice sort of glossy kind of shiny look to it without actually having to put anything on there so then when you get down to the stern here you just want to kind of pull it off like that Kind of fill in any empty spots, whatever you think it needs to look like. Okay, and then we have the, the little empty section right here where you're just going to tie, ah, get the paint off the brush. You're going to do some, uh, just again, sort of a stippling or kind of some dry brushy striation kind of marks like that. And that will pretty much be it. Just if you missed any areas, go back, you can touch them up a little bit. And that's pretty much it for the white so we'll set that down for just a second let that dry and we'll come back in just a minute okay guys so once you've given that just a few minutes to dry um you're going to go in with your sort of teal or turquoise or whatever color you wanted for that and you're going to do just sort of the inside section right here so and again you're going to do the same type of just kind of stippling sort of pattern to it and kind of go in all around there and if it mixes into the white a little bit if the white's still a little bit damp not quite dry that's not that big a deal um because i mean it's just water all kind of mixing up into each other so there's a few different colors there it's not a big deal but you just want to keep doing that until you get this whole sort of inside of the wake section right there filled in You don't want to just super heavy coat it down. That's why I'm just dabbing a little bit off the brush off screen. Fill in that section. And there we go. That's good. So again, give that just a few minutes to dry and we'll be back when we're ready for the medium blue color. Okay, guys, so now we are ready for the third color, which is sort of my, my medium blue kind of color. And where we've done sort of a, a stippling kind of motion with the, the pass to the white and the sort of turquoise kind of color. This one, what we're going to do is more of a just sort of kind of br uh, dry brushing kind of streaking kind of motion. Because you don't really want it to be quite as solid as some of the other stuff we have around here. So what you're going to do is you're going to come, first off, you're going to start parallel to the edge of the base here. And just kind of go this sort of motion and if it starts getting too dry get you a little bit more paint dab off some of it because you don't want it to be too heavy and then just keep kind of going in that same motion then once you actually start to get into the bow of the ship you're going to kind of angle it more sort of towards the back as it's kind of coming in like this and you can go all the way into the center of the ship itself on the underside here that way you won't have sort of like a, a weird kind of seam between the white and the blue section and there's no specific rhyme or reason to how you do this you know some sections can be a little bit more dense some sections can be not quite as dense however you uh however you want to do it really but you just want to kind of keep the same sort of streaking pattern in and you want to keep it mainly all in the same direction um because the water is not going to like flow against itself as it's coming off the side of the ship basically you just want to go all the way down to the edge there and then once you get one side done just flip it over and you do the same thing to the other side again just kind of pulling it in a streaking motion coming from the center on the underside there and this can kind of get in the way if you have anything printed on the bottom of the base that you, you want to keep visible like I was talking about earlier so just be careful if you have something that you need to keep visible. You know, don't paint right over that section, obviously. Kind of keep pulling it. Same kind of section. You can go back in, fill up some sections that you missed earlier, 
if you want. And just keep that same sort of kind of streaking pattern coming off of it like that. All the way down to the edge of the base again. And look, if you keep hitting the edge like that, we've uh, we made a fun instrument. Okay, so there's our medium blue section done. Actually, I'm going to fill in just a teeny little bit on that edge right there. There we go. All right, so there's our medium blue section done. So we're going to set that down. Ooh, not like that. Set it down like that and let that dry for a few minutes as well. And then we'll be back with our final color. All right, guys, we're back with our last color, which is going to be the dark blue. Now for this one, the the past colors we've been using sort of um, just like a crappy kind of dry brush, an old messed up one. This one you want to use sort of like a, a bigger fan brush because you're going to be painting the entirety of the underside of the base. Um, again, you can leave the center section see-through if you want, like I was mentioning earlier, or you can just cover over it. Um, it doesn't really matter because that part won't really be seen, but you just make sure you get everything that you've painted so far. And since we are just painting on to just sort of... Uh, uh, you know, a, a, a glossy, smooth plastic. You'll probably have to do two coats of this. And if you do, I recommend going in um, differing directions. Basically, as you see, I'm painting sort of in a downward motion now. When I do a second coat, you want to do a motion in this way. That way you don't see so much of the brush strokes. We're just painting this entire thing. You go back, if you get some buildup along the edges here, you just run your finger across and get any off because you don't really want any on the the um, the other side that the top side that's going to be seen because it won't be glossy because uh, it's not showing through from the underside obviously um, so we just keep doing this and like I said if you get some you can just kind of rub your finger off so it doesn't build up right there on that edge painting it up okay and that's basically that guys um, I'm gonna wait for that to dry I'm gonna put just a second coat over it like I was mentioning and then we'll be back for the the last final touches okay okay guys so now that our final coat of the dark blue is dry we can flip it over and now we have the finished base. So as you can see, we've sort of got the uh, the wake and the, the wave and the foam kind of effect without having to do any actual of the, the water effect sculpting or anything like that. Just a, a quick little easy paint from the underside. And it also gives it, I'm not sure if you can really pick it up on here, but it gives it a nice sort of kind of glossy, watery shine to it. Um, so the very last thing... Um, you can do like I was mentioning, which was um, completely optional. If you just want to take just a strip of packing tape and you can set it along the underside here just to kind of protect your paint job a little bit. You just kind of set it down on there, press it down around the edges. Then take your hobby knife or even just scissors and just trim along the edges. Get all that excess off. And just as you're doing this, be careful and make sure you don't kind of jump the edge over onto the, um, the actual base itself. Because with it being that kind of clear film on the top, it will show... Uh, scratches and cuts and stuff so you want to be a little bit careful with that and then pull off the excess tape around the edges oh that one's kind of stuck on there here we go and that one go back over it and it didn't cut all the way the first time this exacto is probably a little dull I use it quite frequently
Alrighty, so once you get all of that trimmed off, that is your finished product. You've got the tape on the bottom now to protect your paint job so as you're moving along the table and stuff, it won't scrape anything off like that. Um, so I'll be back in just a second with the final wrap-up. Alright, so that's pretty much it, guys. There is our finished base. All that's left to do is go on the computer and print out any type of information that you wanted to put on there. Um, and then just stick it down with a little bit of glue or some double-sided tape or even more of the uh, the blue tack that we use to actually stick the model down. That works just as well too, just a tiny little bit of it. Um, but other than that, we're done. Um, I use these specific colors because they match the uh, the big water mat that I play on. But um, if you have, you know, whatever colors you your, your mat is, you want to try and match those as best you can. Just different enough that the base, you know, kind of stands out but not crazy stand out obviously so you might want to experiment a little bit you know see what looks good on your mat that kind of thing but um that's pretty much it guys uh thanks for watching i, I hope you enjoyed hope you learned a little bit of something um like comment subscribe if this is the type of stuff that you're interested in we'll see you next time thanks